Back home now, Labor is expected to keep stage three tax cuts that will benefit high and middle income earners in the October budget, despite mounting pressure to dump or cap the policy. The Prime Minister insists the government's position hasn't changed, but the tax debate isn't over yet, with the government deferring the fight to next year's May budget, when Australians could be feeling inflation impacts the worst. Joining us live now is Nationals leader, I should say, David Littleproud. David Littleproud, thank you for your time this morning. Is the Prime Minister being transparent here? Do you believe that stage three tax cuts will be kept as promised? Well, not if he can help it. I mean, he sent Jim Chalmers out to fly the kite to see what he can get away with. You just simply cannot trust Labor with tax cuts. Uh, these aren't tax cuts for the big end of town. This is for middle income earners. 45,000 to 200,000 will get a tax cut that lower income earners we gave to. It's staged, it's not coming until 2024. Uh, all the headwinds that Jim Chalmers and Anthony Albanese are talking about in terms of global issues and the, in the conflict in Ukraine, uh, they, were, they were there before the election. Everyone knew what was coming. Uh, and they voted for this in the parliament. And this is why the Australians get jack of politicians when they go and promise the world to them leading up to an election. And then straight after it, uh, they say, oh, well, look, we found a reason why not to do it. You will erode trust to the Australian people if Anthony Albanese doesn't square up with this. He doesn't look the Australian people in the eye and follow through on this. But what I fear is this is just the beginning of the start of taxation under this mob. Uh, they're unable in the parliament to even be able to articulate that they won't increase taxes on superannuants, uh, those in family trusts uh, that use it as a legitimate vehicle to make sure they have investment and in terms of succession of their businesses and farms. Uh, so this government has made it very clear that they're trying to wrangle themselves out of uh, commitments that they voted for on the floor of parliament, but then look to go further. And this is where you've got to get your priorities right as a government. You prioritise about supplying the services you need, but then ultimately whatever's left over should go back into the Australian people's pockets because we believe that they know how to spend that better than a bureaucrat in Canberra. What about deferring the details of the stage three <coughs> tax cuts to next May's budget? Do you think that's probably the best move? Well, it's tricky, and this is all it is, is Jim Chalmers has been tricky and sneaky. Uh, instead of being up front, they can give an LAW law commitment uh, to these tax cuts. This is Anthony Albanese's LAW law commitment. This is his LAW law tax cut moment, uh, and then if he doesn't follow through on it, if he doesn't give the Australian people that commitment today, then he's failed. He's no better than what Paul Keating did to the Australian public. He's promised them the world and delivered nothing. And this is a defining moment for this government and this Prime Minister to make sure that he can clearly articulate that this is a LAW law tax cut. Otherwise, the Australian people will rightfully have been sold a pup and they will rightfully be upset. OK, looking at the budget, new budget analysis has revealed that major defence projects are running significantly over budget. Richard Miles has blamed the former government for chaotic administration. Does he have a point? Oh, I think this is uh, something that's been going on for decades of, of politicians and governments of all, all uh, political persuasions. It's a cultural issue within defence that I think uh, Peter Dutton was trying to, to change and ministers of the past of both political persuasion have tried to change. I mean, we've seen procurement of assets that don't uh, meet our standards and aren't fit for future or fit for purpose. I mean, we saw helicopters purchase that you couldn't have a, a, a machine gunner sitting out the side of. I mean, these are the sort of things that uh, the Defence Department should be held to account. Those in the procurement should be held to account. It's a cultural issue that I think ministers of all political persuasions need to address rather than trying to make it into a political uh, attack point. They should be looking at the cultural deficiencies in with defence and particularly procurement and making sure those that make these decisions that cost the Australian taxpayer billions of dollars for assets that aren't fit for purpose should be held for account. You would be held to account if you're in the private sector and, and so too should you if you're in defence procurement if you make these, uh, these decisions that the Australian taxpayer pays for. OK, well, parts of New South Wales are experiencing major flooding again. Farmers are struggling. How can we support those who are badly affected and where can we be doing better? 
Yeah, look, I think you've got to understand the trauma that will be coming through some of the minds of those, particularly in northern New South Wales, that have just endured uh, one of the worst floods in living memory. So it's important that we understand that. We give them mental support uh, in making sure that they're prepared. But, you know, as a government, we will already put in place um, hundreds of millions of dollars in mitigation work, partnering with states, and it's important we continue to do that. I think this is where the mitigation works can also look to these things called dams, $7.4 billion worth of infrastructure spend on dams alone, not just to store it and to be used for agriculture, but to mitigate against flooding. That's just common sense. And if there is any reason for us to continue to build dams, particularly in northern New South Wales and southeast Queensland, well, these, these weather events are exactly that. And this is where uh, states need to get on board. The federal government uh, has, has been prepared to, to pay for it. They have to simply burn the diesel, dig the holes, store the water, mitigate for these households well into the future. That's common sense. And that's why the government, the federal government, should continue to commit in this budget the money that we set aside, the $7.4 billion for dams, and then the states should get on with the job of building them.